Bum-ba-da-dum, bum ba da dum Sea lick. That's kind of a nice change, a sea lick. Howdy out there in YouTube land and on my website. Welcome to BanjoBenClark.com. I'm your humble host today playing in the key of C on the website that offers you everything you want to know when it comes to learn how to pick on the guitar or perhaps the banjo or maybe even the mandolin. Um, this week on my Facebook page, which by the way, if you're not um, a follower of my Facebook page, I invite you over there because not only do I um, put up ridiculous stuff there, like crazy uh, photos and different stuff that I'm up to, but I also use my Facebook page to often determine which material I'm going to teach that week on the site. Um, so this week I put up a poll question on my Facebook page, which you can see my Facebook page here in the little graphic. Now, I gave three different choices of what you wanted to learn this week. Either um, Billy in the Low Ground, which is one that I'd had a lot of requests for in the past, uh, continue my rhythm series, or to do another Bag of Licks lesson. And Bag of Licks won, obviously, as you can see from the title, but I had a really strong showing for Billy in the Low Ground as well. So I thought, hmm, this could be a sign that maybe we ought to do a Bag of Licks in C. And not only that, but um, concentrate on some licks that might work in a fiddle tune like Billy in the Low Ground or Whiskey Before Breakfast. Those rags, all those little fiddle tunes that Bob Wills likes to play, or like to play. He's still the king, by the way. Anyway, what I'd like to do today is show you four C licks, two F licks, and two G licks, and how to put them all together. It sounds like this. that's all just eight licks just put in in different orders and that's the um, the whole key to the bag of licks lesson uh, idea is that we learn some licks in different keys over different chords then we learn how to interchange them and essentially learn how to improvise by grabbing uh, reaching into our bag of licks and putting licks back to back um, to, to fit whatever chord progression we're playing in. Um, so what we're going to do is learn each one of these licks. I'm going to play them slowly for you first, then I'll teach you exactly how to play them. And then I've got three different combinations where we'll learn how to put these together. And that's really where the learning takes place because we learn how to apply what we've learned. And then also if you're a member of the website, BanjoBenClark.com, as a Gold Pick member, we're going to, um, I'm going to have rhythm tracks up for you on the guitar where I just play through that progression. I have three different speeds and I play through it like three times at each speed and you're able to take um, these licks which you get off the tab on my website and put them into practice and learn how to play those so that next time you're in a jam situation or playing situation you're going in and record on a record or whatever and you've got a solo coming up in the key of C man you've got a wealth of information here to pull from. I want to play this C lick number one for you slowly from start to finish. It's two measures long, and then we'll uh, we'll dive in and and learn it note for note. Uh, first one sounds like this. There, measure one. Pretty straightforward. It's really scalar, and a lot of these licks are very scale based. There's not a lot of. Uh, jumping around like we've done bag of licks in the past. Um, so we're going to start there on the third fret of our A string, which is the C note. That's the root of the C chord. That's what key we're in. And we're going to start there with the down stroke. Pay attention to your pick strokes. I label those on purpose. It's not easy to label every one of these notes with the pick direction. So um, work with me to keep them straight. Well, uh, there measure one, we're going to do a down on the third fret, up on the second fret, down on the third, on an open D string, down on the second fret of that D string, up on an open G string, down on the second fret of that G string, and open on the B string. And that's going to end the first measure. And then we're going to rest, um, we're going to come to rest there on the first fret of the B string at the top of measure two. And what do you notice about that note that's different? Notice how the stem that goes beneath the note is not tied to anything. That means it's a quarter note, so it gets a whole beat all by itself. So we're going to sit there for a little while. 
one, and then we're going to play the rest of the measure. First fret, third fret, first fret, open, second fret, open. Okay, so now I'm going to count along, and I want you to try to follow along with me through those first two measures of this C-Lick number one. Two, ready, go. One and two. Now remember, if that's a little too fast for you, which it probably is going to be, um, that's what's great about these videos. You can pause it and you can sit there and practice this lick until you get it down a little more. And you can come back with me and play those up to speed. Now let's look at C lick number two. It starts in measure four there. And this has got a pretty cool effect on it. We're going to grab our ring finger and we're going to place on the fourth fret of the B string. That's an E flat note, a flat three. Uh, in the key of C. And what I would like for you to do, we're going to be bending this um, string up this way, okay? And it's really tough, especially if you're playing medium gauge strings, which I like, um, to do that with one finger, okay? So what I like to do is pile on this middle finger behind it on the third fret, and we're going to use the power of both of those fingers to press up on this bend. This whole uh, C lick number two sounds like this. So those are all quarter notes there in measure four, meaning they all get one beat apiece. Okay, so they're slower than the rest of these eighth notes, and they're all down strokes. So bend, open, bend, open, and you can choose whether to keep that bending note uh, sustaining through the open strings. It, it creates a little bit of dissonance there, which is kind of cool, or you can choose to mute it. Measure five, we're just coming um, right down the scale, pretty much. How about you try to see lake number two with me, really slow. Two, ready, go. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and yeah, good stuff. Let's look at see lake number three now. 